How does that look? I'm not saying that. <laughs> you get some sense that there's a handful of stocks. Look at that. I mean, you could tie that to the market. Bang. Hey, folks, welcome back to Commercial Break. I'm Tim Seymour, and the man sitting in his cozy little office over there is, is Guy Adami. Tonight's show, we're actually going to, I mean, look, it's the middle of winter, Guy. And, and, and honestly, I wish spring was around the corner, but we just had a big snowstorm in the Northeast. And, you know, you look like you're about ready to light like a pipe and sit back in your, in your office there between those two leathers. Yeah, ever, by the way, have you ever smoked a pipe? Because no. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no. one of but, those you things. Know, you, it, it's, it's like John Houseman. You remember those commercials with yeah. John Houseman? Yeah. We make fast money the old-fashioned way. <laughs> we earn. In fact, wasn't he one of the Dukes? He, was he one of the Dukes? Was he Duke and Duke? Was he? I, don't, I mean, I feel he could have been. But he seems like he was a Duke. Let me ask you a question, though, before we get into it. Why is there a capybara <laughs> behind you? I don't understand. Dude, dude, that, that rodent is absolutely photobombing us here. And it's not a capybara. It, it's, and it's not, it's not an otter. Um, and by the way, when I say otter, who do you think of? I mean, come on. It's Animal House. It immediately <laughs> goes to Animal House. The, the scene, I will tell you. The scene in the supermarket is one of the top 10 scenes in movie history. Dane, Dane Wormer's wife. Um, I think the scene when, when they, when, you know, Fawn Leibowitz and the Kiln accident is just one of the great, again, uh, skits. And, of course, Otis Knight. By the way, I mean, that, that uh, you know, shout song b became like a must play. After, I mean, I, I think that song existed for 30 years. No one listened to that song until Animal House. And then it became every party you went to, every, like, sweet 16, every wedding, you're, like, dancing to Otis Day and the Nights. Yeah, they, they really, that song got played out during our college years. You're right. Every party you went to, somebody was playing it, and everybody would get a little bit louder and softer, and people went up and down. It <laughs> drove me crazy, to be honest with you. But, so you're saying it's not a capybara, which, by the way, I think are indigenous I have no idea what a capybara is. To, yeah. to South America. They're large water-based rodents, and it looks like one. But apparently, since you're mentioning winter, it's got to be a groundhog, I would imagine. Yeah, it, it's a groundhog, by the way. You know, you mentioned there's there's rats walking around my street in New York City that, that are of that size. Groundhog's Day. So so no one really knows when Groundhog's Day is, right? You just kind of heard Groundhog's Day came and went, and that actually we've got more winter coming. But, but, but you know, if you think about it, it's nice to have something to look forward to. If they tell you winter's ending early, um, you know, I'm, I'm fired up. I don't really understand it because it's almost backwards, right? Um, if, the, if the groundhog comes out of the hole and sees its shadow, um, it's only seeing its shadow because the sun's out, right? So wh why uh, does listen, that mean you have more winter? It's backwards. Can, can I tell you something? The, only the two guys with the top hats really fully understand what goes on. Nobody can intelligently explain Groundhog's Day. I still don't know. I don't particularly care. All I know is I figure we got six weeks left at least. By the way, in the Northeast, in case you're playing our home game, Winter lasts until about early April. So we got a lot more than yeah. six weeks ahead of us. And by the way, I feel like I need to defend winter. Um, my wife, who's from the South, you know, is always trying to tell me that it's winter till like May. Look, on the, like, technically, according to the calendar, bro, March 21. You know, that, whoa, whoa, that's my, that's my vernal equinox. Um, yeah, you, you March. Just, you just, you just broed me. I mean, I you broed heavy you broed me. I'm broke because, again, I don't need to hear you tell me that winter runs until April. It runs until March 21. And, and I and I find like I have to defend the, the, the climate in the Northeast because it just is what it is. By the way, can you tell me where uh, they conduct this little charade every year with this with this rodent? Puxatani, I believe, is where they play. And the only reason I know that is because the cat's name is Puxatani Phil. And, and I want to talk about Bill Murray movies because why wouldn't we? But... <laughs> You, you were getting on your wife in terms of winter. I, I'll defend her and say this um, as a Yankee fan that you know I am. I remember an opening day at Yankee Stadium, which oh, happens I know to be it well. in April, I know where it well. um, our guy Andy Pettit was pitching in a snowstorm. And last I look, it doesn't snow in the spring, buddy. See, I butted so, you. You, you broed me. I butted you. Look, look, Chief. Chief, I was at that game, and, and in one of the upcoming – episodes of commercial break i'm going to take out the id card i have uh as i was working in the pinstripe pub at yankee stadium 
during that day. Yeah, that's right, buddy. You were probably luxuriating in a box seat while the, while the working class guy from Scarsdale actually had to, had to earn his way through college. So, so guess what? Um, I remember the game. Um, it was a wintry spring day on the calendar, but it was nonetheless spring. So Bill Murray did a really bad movie called Groundhog's Day. Uh, and seriously, it was not one of his best, all right? You, you don't tell me it was. No, I'm not going to tell you it was, but it's a movie that obviously becomes very topical this time of year, and they do all those meme things around it. I will tell you that amongst the many great Bill Murray movies, and there are many, I'll put Ghostbusters up there. I mean, I like ah, what was dude, going on, maybe dude, because I'm a huge Sigourney Weaver fan. Sigourney? Sigourney. Okay, don't Sigourney her. So who are you going to call Ghostbusters was, was an absurd movie. And again, it was, it was almost clownish. And, and to me, it became really difficult to watch. But if I'm going to Bill Murray it, um, I, I would either go Meatballs, uh, which was really like a breakout film for him. And I, you know, I could probably recite um, line for line. Um, Stripes was, uh, if you think about the people that were in Stripes, and, and it was a who's who um, of young up and coming comics. Um, definitely Stripes, but obviously Caddyshack. I mean, you, know, you can't talk Bill Murray movies. Every kid that went to a Northeastern prep school, by the way, in the 80s, could quote every single line from Caddyshack. So you're not a fan of um, Ghostbusters. I get it. I mentioned Sigourney Weaver. Let me throw this one at you. Were you a fan of Aliens, the movie? I confused Sigourney with, with uh, Adrian Barbeau. Um, she was, one was Aliens, one was Swamp Thing. But I mean, I, look, I don't know why I'm doing it. Maybe there's some common attributes. I have no idea. But, but uh, you know, Sigourney Weaver, look, she was clearly played a, a role because when I think of Sigourney Weaver, I think of, of a lady who seemed kind of mean. Like, wasn't she the, the lady in that, that fashion movie? You know, that movie about, uh, uh, you know, no, actually, she, that's she Meryl Streep. It was Meryl <laughs> Streep that was about, you know, the woman from Vogue, no. You know, you say she was mean. She was tough. She had to be tough in Aliens. Think about what was going on. She was Ellen Ripley, by the way. And I think of Ripley. What do you think? When believe, you hear Ripley, what do you think of? Look, b believe it or not, and somehow people still, like, go to that, that museum. But you talk about mean. Let's talk about mean. Markets have been mean, okay? And it feels like... What? What does it feel like, Guy? feels like Groundhog's Day. Yes, it does. And, and, and obviously, look, Facebook will always be Facebook to me. I'm not going to call them metaverse or whatever they want to do. In fact, you know, I was looking up after they had horrendous earnings. Um, you know, just to, you know, I was playing, I was actually having some fun on Twitter and referring to, I wonder how their stock did in the metaverse, you know? And, and then I looked up, you know, they don't even have the ticker, M-E-T-A. You'd think that they would have went out and got that and paid somebody off to get it. They don't even have that ticker. But look, markets right now, we've seen this before, and you could make an argument, and I guess the Groundhog's Day metaphor is something that kind of keeps happening, but the markets keep stumbling on these high multiple stocks, of which Facebook, by the way, is not, um, and yet got destroyed. Without question, um, you wonder if it's Groundhog's Day for the market, or, get ready for it, are we in this okay. new paradigm, right? And will the capybaras emerge from their hole and start to see their shadows. Because if that happens, uh, it's going to get scary out there, Tim. Well, look, I mean, it, you know, capybaras should just go back into their holes. And 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 I think, you know, look, we, we, every night we have to show up and try to take a deep breath on, on uh, financial TV. But, you know, I, I think right now people do need to take a deep breath because I think there are great companies out there that are not falling under the same expectations of growth. Uh, and, and, you know, are companies that actually, guess, was make money. You say paradigm. I'm going to talk about profitability, um, and that's you know that's really important, man. So anyway, you know, enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy it. And listen, folks, we hope you enjoy your travels wherever you are. My sense, if you're traveling, you can find us. He's Tim Seymour. I'm Guy Adami. We're neither one of us are capybaras, but collectively we are. Yeah, and, and I'm not Punxsutawney Phil or Phil. I'm Tim. Your guy. We're commercial break. See you soon.